Hello, hello, Essential Stencil friends. This is Grace here getting ready to show you, oh my goodness, some of the new things. You guys, the new transfers, I'm in love. I'm in love. But before we work with them, I'm going to put on my apron because I'm going to be doing a bit of painting and I don't want to get any paint on my shirt. So as you guys are coming on, say hello. Let me know that you're here. Tell me where you're coming in from tonight on the Essential Stencil page. I'm going to do a live demo for you with some of the stencils and the rub-on transfers, the new ones. I cannot wait to show you. And um, there'll be three sets of stencils given away tonight live. If you see that, wait, up there maybe, that red live button, that means that tonight while you're live watching, Essential Stencil is, is going to randomly pull a few names from the comments. So logically, you want to comment like a lot. <laughs> the more you comment, the more your name will get out there and they'll see you and the more chances you have to win a set of stencils from Essential Stencil. And replay watchers, you are not left behind. I'll tell you what, they're going to give another set of replay watchers. They'll give another set, one more set out to those of you catching the replay. So let us know you're catching the replay if that's what you're doing. Tonight I'm going to use this set. I think this set right here, it's called Hey Boo. <laughs> and that's actually... That's actually the one that I want to use. You guys, I don't know what has gotten into me the last couple of years. I was never a big Halloween fan, but are you kidding me with how cute that is? Hey, boo. And then this set comes with Happy Halloween. And it also, it's backwards, but let me show you. It comes with this, which this one, I seriously, like, really love this one. I really love this one. I got to find a way to use that. Anyway, I'm going to be using this set of stencils with the set of transfers, the new gnome Halloween themed transfers. I'm not even gonna put that back in the bag because I'll need it later. So I'll show those here in a second. I'm gonna grab the feed on my iPad so I can see you while I'm creating. Hello, Miss Evelyn watching from hot Texas. Evelyn, it started out 60 degrees this morning. You'll appreciate this because I know it's so hot in the South. It started out this morning at 60 degrees at like 6, 7 a.m., but we did end up getting close to 90, so it was kind of hot for us today. I know it's so much hotter where you are, so I hope you're staying hydrated and cool, laying low. Hey, Diana, she says, I've been using the alphabet stencils on parrots, leaves, bananas, and monkeys for a parade. Oh, that sounds super fun. Good for you, Diana. Use up those stencils. Use them. They'll never go bad. They'll never get used up. You can use them and wash them over and over again. So I'm glad you're using them. Hello, Kathy. Kathy, you are not catching the replay. You are catching me live, sweet friend. We are here live. And listen, my house is full of football players. <laughs> I just cooked four pounds of spaghetti for some of the kids on the football team, our high school football team. Um, they, the boys were getting together to do their fantasy football, something with fantasy football. Today, football practice started, so they were hungry. I just made them some spaghetti and meat sauce, and um, my heart couldn't be happier just, just to see them sit and eat together as friends and enjoy it. Alisa says it's really hot here in Florida. I'm so sorry, my love. Um, Alisa, I don't know if I told you guys. Those of you who are crafty chicks and follow me over on my page, The Comfy Nest with Grace, I'd be honored if any and all of you do. Um, but I may have mentioned my sister who lives in Florida. She's on an Alaskan cruise right now. So she said she was going to have to like pack a sweatshirt. <laughs> so those of you in Florida, that would be welcomed cool air, I'm sure. Hey, Peggy from Texas. Jude is here. She says, yes, stencils are the best. We happen to agree with you. We do. We do. Okay. Let me, let me like seriously try to find this feed here on my iPad. So that when I put this camera, I'm going to put it down on my table so that you can see what I'm doing. Hmm. That's not showing me what I like, what I want. The new Facebook, the way we do things now, I have to change. Oh, good gravy. I have to change that. <laughs> like you can't just get where you were trying to get to as easily as you used to. Okay, let's see. Essential stencil. It generally doesn't take this long, so thank you for being patient. Um, have you guys, I would love to know, because it's just, it's just so interesting to me. Have you started with your fall decor? Have you started with your fall crafting and creating? And there's no right or wrong answer. There's no judgment here. Like, 
if you've started, is it because you have a business and you're trying to get signs and things ready for that? Or is it just because you love fall so much you can't get enough pumpkins? Like, tell us, tell us in the comments. I'm fascinated by this whole topic. I generally, Pam says not yet. I, you know, I generally wait. I generally don't do fall and Halloween stuff so early, but there are a lot of folks out there doing it, and it kind of gets me excited at the same time. Yes, Gana. I'm sorry to bother you. Cause what I is it? I know, I'm live, honey. Can I get this with the remaining money that you owe me? Uh, not right now. Um, this isn't something to talk about right now. My <laughs> 15-year-old bargaining with me on purchasing. Yeah, kid, um, when I'm done with my live, we can talk about that. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for the distraction, folks. Lisa has done a lot with fall and with Christmas. So Lisa, <clears throat> the fall and Christmas supplies that you're working with, did you already have them on hand or are you, like somebody said that Hobby Lobby has a lot of stuff out already. Are you finding it now already? Like out, like to purchase. Hi Sue, how are you? Gina says, no fall, I have not finished summer. Listen, Gina, I'm with you. The <laughs> I want summer to last as long as possible. And it there's like literally, I, you do you girl. If you are ready for Halloween, get all the pumpkins around your house. Like just do it. Do what makes your heart happy. But usually I want fall to linger like through August. I don't want to think back to school until the end of school, like or until the end of summer when school starts. Um, Elizabeth says our 11 year old great grandson started football camp this week. Oh, it's been in the 90s. So this morning, thankfully when our boys had, um, the first day of football this morning until noon it was still like I think it was like 73 or 74 when they finished at noon so whew that was good I, I do worry about those kids out there and the coaches out on the field when it's so blazing hot you just can't get away from that heat um, I started fall projects with my friend as we are doing a small craft boutique Dee, Dee that sounds really exciting that's a good reason to get started because when you're making multiple signs to sell at a boutique or a vendor event or something you really do need to be prepared ahead of time cannot wait you cannot wait Pam I'm with you honey I love summer I love fall too I really love the change of seasons I really love all the crispy leaves and the pumpkins and gourds I love them. I'm just not ready for them yet, personally. <laughs> personally, but you guys, this set of rub-on transfers. Oh, who loves the gnomes? Who loves the gnomes? I'm going to show you something. I just got these in the mail today. Halloween truck and gnomes. These are rub-on transfers. I'm going to show you. You get a bunch of cute little gnomes and all their Halloween glory with pumpkins. So fall and Halloween, look at the little cauldron this guy's holding with bats and mushrooms. <gasps> look at the big house, you guys. Look at the huge house and the even bigger truck. Ah, that truck. I'm gonna use the truck tonight. I can't, I can't not use it. Look at this rub on truck. Are you kidding me? Look at the color on these pumpkins. And I love the spiders. I love, I love the spider web. I, wait, where, there it is. I love the spider web. I love that there's a little spider here. It's so beautiful. Look at this cute cauldron. Oh, upside down. You guys, we're using this tonight. I can't even stop myself. That's why I think underneath that, I'm gonna use the, hey boo. <laughs> we're gonna use that, I think tonight if I can fit it, but let me show you the rest of what comes with these rub-on transfers. You guys, look at, these are over the top. The detail and the color on these, just, just amazing. Look at this guy with the spider coming off of his hat. You guys, they're super adorable. And look at this one sitting on the mushroom. I'm not even like, I like gnomes. I really love fairies. I'm kind of into the fairies lately. And the, the little fairy villages, they have mushrooms all over. So it's kind of the same thing as the gnomes, actually. Um, I can't resist these gnomes. They're just so stinking cute. But look at that house, you guys. It's enormous. You get all three of these sheets in this pack when you buy it. When you buy this one pack, you get three sheets. One, two, and three. And it has all of those design elements. It's called Halloween no or Halloween trucks, truck and gnomes. Um, so go grab it while you can before they sell out. 
You even get instructions. You even get a little video how to use. You use your little scan, you use your phone to scan that code and it'll bring up a video on how to use it. I'm gonna show you tonight how to use it. I wanted quickly, I'm gonna measure this house because I wonder if you can tell the scale. From the very top to the very bottom, it's about eight inches tall. And from all the way left to right, it's about eight inches wide. So that's eight by eight. This is a big transfer and the colors are amazing. The shapes are amazing. Uh, let me quickly, I'm gonna put that aside. Let's measure the truck because it's big, you guys. Let me get you down on the table so you can see what I'm doing. Can you see this? Let me uh, lift you up and I'll scoot things over so you can see exactly what I'm doing. Do you see how big this is? It is about 14 and a half inches long. And then from the bottom of this wheel to the top of this pumpkin, which is the highest point, is about nine and a half inches. It's big, it's big. I have this 16 by 16 inch board. So this is what I'm gonna put it on. I have the 16 by 16 inch board. Maybe that light helps you guys. I have two of them actually. <laughs> I had two of them on hand and I thought this might be perfect. I think that, let me just set that one aside. This truck is gonna fit really well on here, you guys. The truck fits perfectly on this 16 inch round. And then I'm gonna put it up here and then I'm gonna put the hey boo down here. But we gotta get this, we gotta get this painted up and I have some really beautiful colors. I'll show you kind of my thought process when I got the colors pulled out. Um, first, I'm gonna sand it down. I probably should have done this ahead of time. But then again, I was gonna even paint it ahead of time, but then I thought, you know what? If I paint it ahead of time, you're not gonna to get to see the whole, like this is how you do it. So I'm just gonna give it a quick sanding to smooth it out. And really, these little palette grooves that are in this, it has like little palette grooves right here. They get a little bit gnarly from the, the, you know, the tool or the blade that gives you that little, um, that little groove. So I like to just smooth them out a little bit. And I'm going to just, the only reason I'm doing this is to dust it off. I'm going to hit it with this air to get rid of all that dust. And then I think I'll probably, what I usually do is then come in with a rag and give it a quick wipe down. Okay, so this has one, two, three, four, five different sections to it. Can you see them? Five different sections. And look at the colors that I pulled. I've got this, I've got this, I've got this, it's just white, and I have this. Okay, these are the colors that I pulled. Look at the colors of my pumpkins. They really match the colors of my pumpkins. So I think I'm gonna stick with this theme. And then I also pulled like this army green color. Um, we'll see, I just, I've gotta get these palette sections, one, two, three, four, five of them painted. And then we'll see where this takes us. I'm just gonna start. <laughs> I'm just gonna start because I don't know exactly where I'm gonna put what color. Hey, Carla watching from Ohio. Janine says same, I'm not a huge gnome person. But these stinking, these are stinking adorable. They may take me, they may make me a fan. I'm telling you, you and me, you and me, friend, because Janine, I think they're cute, but I wouldn't go out of my way for them. But man, I got these in the mail today and I'm so stinking excited about them. I really am. Okay, I need some paint colors. So I'm gonna come in these little, these bottles. This thing right here gets clogged up a little. So I gotta clear that out. I know this little paint palette looks terrible. I know it does. Come on, I need you to like give up the paint. Give us some paint. <laughs> Come on. Here it comes. I think it's clogged, you guys. <laughs> I can't squeeze hard enough to get this out of here. All right, we might have to go another route. We might have to take this cover off and grab us some paint. See, there's lots of paint in there. All right, you're gonna be that way. I'm gonna put this one here because it's the most bright color and I don't want it to overwhelm. So I'm gonna put it in the smallest section. 
I don't get really, when I'm doing these paint palette boards with multiple colors, I'm totally cool. If I get a little bit of the orange in this next section where the next color is going, it doesn't bother me in the least because I usually do a distressed look. So I like my colors to kind of mix with one another because I feel like they work together better. So I'm gonna do that there. Not sure, just not sure what else I'm gonna do. Um, so I'm just gonna put that orange aside for a minute. I really love, this color is called Arles, A-R-L-E-S, and it is an Annie Sloan chalk pink that I've had. I mean, I'm not kidding, I probably have had this for 10 years. But it's a beautiful color. Oh, I don't know. I see conversations going on, but I don't know what they're about. Thank you, Cindy, for sprinkling the nest. Mitzi's saying she's loving these. You're loving them so much, Brenda. I'm glad. I'm so glad. Yeah, Lisa, she says, get a Q-tip. I could get a Q-tip. Whoop, this one's not clogged. <laughs> this one, I got plenty of paint. All right, new paintbrush. And let's go in... I think I'm gonna put this color here. Cause I, ooh, I have some neutral colors to add. Um, so I'm gonna put the brighter colors away from each other. And you see, I'm a messy, messy mess girl. I don't, um, this isn't, okay, the colors that I'm putting on are part of the background. The stars of the show are gonna be the truck and the transfer, or the, uh, what do you call it? The truck and then the hey boo, the stencil. So, this right here, it's just background. It's it's like complimentary. It's not the star of the show, as I as I say. <laughs> so I don't really. I'm not necessarily real worked up about how the paint turns out. I may even do a little distressing on this stuff with some dark gray because that color is also in the you know the truck transfer. But I just for now I just want to get some of these colors that are in the pumpkins on the back of the board. Okay, so there's that. Put this one aside, may come back to it, I'm not sure. Let's use, okay, if I put the transfer on top, the rub on transfer, the truck with the pumpkins, and then on the bottom, I'm gonna put hey boo. So I want this section where the hey boo is gonna be, I want it to be white. So I'm gonna grab this, it's incredibly thick and old. Let's see if we can get anything out of here. I'm not even sure. Anybody else have old thick paints? <laughs> this one is really thick. I might need, I might need a different tool. All right, look at this. We got us some thick paint here. Don't be afraid of your thick paints. Actually, thick paints can be fantastic. If you're a mixed media person, they're so fun to work with because they add like cool textures. And if it's really thick and you want a smoother version of it, just grab a little bottle of water and spray it down a little. That'll get it to smooth out so you can spread it. See how I'm not, I'm not like, I'm super not a perfectionist about this stuff. I just need to get the color down. And we're gonna, we're gonna do the fine detail work later. Let's just get the color on. Like I said, I was very tempted to do this before I went live. But I thought, if I do it before I go live, you're not going to be able to see what I did. And for some of you, I know that that's helpful. So I decided to just do it. Now, i got a lot of paint on here. You know what I'm going to do? I have so much here. I'm just going to, let's just bring it up here and use it. We'll grab some of this and we're going to put it up here. I got, it's so thick and there's so much of it. And you see how I hit my, my edges where the two colors meet, my transition points. I don't mind at all if they get mixed. And, um, you know, I got a little white on the orange. I actually add that later. That's kind of my style. So I'm totally cool with it if I get a little bit of the white color on the orange panel. Trying to get this to really stretch this thick paint. All right. Look at that. What do you think so far? Very fall like colors. Oranges and this beautiful mustardy. It's like a really soft mustardy yellow. 
And then we got this cream color. The cream color is from Waverly, which is called Plaster. And I've had this forever, you guys, forever in a day. That's why it's so thick. It's old. Okay, I have one other color pulled out and it's mineral. Um, I don't know, I think, I, I don't know why, but I'm feeling like I should put the orange down here too. Just, I don't usually go for symmetrical. In fact, I usually try not to be symmetrical, but I don't know, I'm just kind of feeling it tonight. <laughs> this bright pop of color. And it's in the pumpkins on the transfer, so. I think it'll work fine. I think what I'll do, because this orange is so deep and it's so um, powerful, I'm gonna come in. This is the brush that had the bit of white on it. And I'm gonna wet that orange and I'm gonna add a little bit of the white to it just to tone it down a little bit so it doesn't match. Like this one is gonna be really bold. This one's gonna be softer. More looks like apricot color. Okay. All right, so that gave me two different colors of orange. I've got the super bold up here. This is the Waverly Plaster. This one is the gold. It's called Arles. Then we have the plaster again. Oop, I'm getting I'm getting yellow colors on things. <laughs> and then I have, I, I toned down the orange right there. Now, this is still a little bit wet. Um, I'm gonna dry it and then I'm gonna dry brush with some of the opposing colors. What do we think? Um, this round, Kathleen, just hang tight, honey. I'll answer your question when I stop. <laughs> this loud noise. Oh, still clearly wet. I will answer that question, Kathleen. Just hang tight, honey. I better get a, a, a wipe from my hands. That's my bad. You love these fall colors. It actually reminds me a little bit of a candy corn. Um, that was not intentional, but hey, I don't mind it. I'm gonna lift you guys up and see if I can get you. Whoa, that might be better up there, huh? Then you can see more of what I'm doing. You get a little bit of a peak of my iPad right here, but that's okay. I think I think we're okay. That you can see better. Yeah, they're kind of bold, right? I put a little bit of yellow there. I did not intend that, but that's what I got. Ooh, it's still wet. I'm still getting paint on my hands. You gotta get this dried off. Um, I'm just gonna even that out a little bit. And I'll answer Kathleen's question in a minute. Yeah, Cindy, are you a, are you a candy corn lover? I love the candy. I love, love, love the candy. And I think they're so cute, actually. Um, but yeah, that makes me think of candy corn for some reason. So what I did, you guys are all complimenting me on the colors, but really, I'm like a total cheater, you guys. Let me give you my tip. So I looked, this is what I'm using is the truck, and the truck is basically gray and white and black. But here, we have all these gorgeous fall colors. They're gorgeous. <laughs> They're beautiful. So I basically just was like, okay, what paint colors do I have that are close to my pumpkin colors? That's all I did. I know you can handle that, girls. Guys and girls, I know you can handle that. Yeah, Anne, Anne says it reminds me of the of corn. I know, <laughs> Gianna, she says your open thing is like really close to the edge, yeah. She knows things just fall off the edge of my table all the time. Okay, once this is pretty dry, and it's important that it's dry when you dry brush, because if, if these paints are not dry, and then I come in and I try to dry brush, I like to distress these palette boards when I do them. I like to distress like the white, I like to add some of the yellow and the orange to the white. And then when I come to the orange, I add a little bit of the yellow and the white to the orange. I like to do that. It makes it look real coordinated to me and I like the distressed look of it. But before you do it, you need to make sure that all of these colors are actually dry. If they're not dry, instead of dry brushing, what you end up with is blended colors and I don't want blended colors. I know, Cindy, gourd just. <laughs> 
I was telling you that they're gorgeous and it made me think, oh, like a gourd. Okay, I have some of that yellow still on this brush. Not a lot of it, but I'm gonna just come in on my white and streak in. I'm gonna do it on the orange too. I'm just streaking in a little bit of the yellow on the other colors. So this is the brush I used for this color and I'm coming in on the other colors and I'm just gonna streak it in. I love this look. I've been doing this for a long time. It's just kind of what I do. I don't know why, but this is the way I like to do it. Okay, so we got some of that. Now I'll take the brush that has some orange on it and I'll add it to the yellow and the white, okay? This, I think it has more paint on it than I want. So I'm gonna grab a scrap piece of paper. It's just an envelope. And make sure that I offload some of that. Because I want the orange, but I don't want like a ton of it. I just want a bit of it. So you see what I'm doing? Just streaking in. And if you want, you know, you can hit your edges. But the, you see, I'm not being super careful. I'm not being really calculated about it. I'm just adding some orange color. If you have to pick up more, you can always come in your paint palette and pick up more. Like here's my little, my orange. If I want it to be a little more bold. Okay, see what I'm doing? It's just kind of mucking it up, but it's making it all like yeah, Linda, that's a good word for it. She says it makes it like rustic, right? We're making it look kind of old and rustic and distressed, like the colors are all melding together. This one is the one that I had the white, but I also had some orange on here. So to get my white, here's my little, my little uh, knife that I was using to grab that white paint. So I'm gonna grab some of that white paint. I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna offload a little bit of it. And then let's just dry brush a little bit of white on the opposite color. So the yellow and then the orange. We're gonna dry brush a little bit of white. Boy, somebody's watching TV in my house and it's really loud. I hope that's not bothering you guys. Okay, the other thing I actually really like the brighter orange around the edges, I think that could be a really bold like frame. So I'm gonna grab, was this the orange brush? Yes, it was. I'm gonna grab a little bit of orange on my brush. I'm just gonna offload some of it. And then I think what I'm gonna do is kind of hit the edges here. because this could tie it all together by coming around the edges and adding a little bit of orange all the way around. I also will be introducing some black because the words, after I get the transfer on here, I think I'm gonna do the words in black or gray, like a dark gray. But if I add the deepest color, that dark orange, and it doesn't have to be the deepest color, it can be whatever color you want, but I'm adding it to the edges to kind of give it a shadow or a framing kind of thing. There is a method to my craziness. There is usually a method to my madness. But I'm not, you see, I'm not super careful. I'm not measuring anything. I'm just, I'm just letting the paintbrush do the work. Okay, what do we think so far? I'm gonna put some paintbrushes aside so they're not in my way. I'm gonna cover up my orange paint because I think I'm done with that for a little while. So before I come in with the, the truck, um, the, oh, with Christine, I forgot. So thank you for asking again. She said, did you say where the round is from? I got this from Craft Deals. Craft, D-E-A-L-Z. -E if you look them up on Facebook, they have a Facebook group, a Facebook page, I believe. Um, but I ordered them from their websites. And they, they have like plain, plain rounds without the palette. They have the palette rounds. They have all kinds of wood cutouts. Christine says, I'm gonna love this. I just know it and it's not even done. <laughs> oh my gosh, that makes me happy. That makes me happy. Isn't it fun to see something come together and you're like, yes, I'm so happy. I'm going to hit it again. I don't know why. I feel like I should like 
blendies. Even though I dry brushed a little, I'm going to soften the paint job. This paint was a little bit thick. So I'm just hitting it with this, distress it a little bit more. There. Now before, before I do anything else, make sure you <laughs> get that dust off of there. I'll do it also on my table. I have some paint on my table. I have some dust. The paint doesn't bother me, but I want to make sure to get the dust off the table. Ooh, it's all on my rag now. Okay, dokie. Now, before I put this down, a couple of things to think about. What I normally do is I normally cut whatever rub-on transfer I'm going to use on a project. I cut it off of the big sheet because it will help you with placement. Now, the transfer, I've explained this before, but can you tell me if you are new here or new to using rub-ons? Are you new to using rub-on transfers? Because um, I'm gonna explain a couple of things and it helps me to know whether you know this already or not. Maybe you do know it, maybe you don't know it. I don't know. Um, I have one of those rounds in my stash waiting to be transformed. Ooh, then Anne, you need to grab these transfers, these new transfers, they're brand new. Go to EssentialStencil.com and grab them. Make sure when you order them, you use my code, the Comfy Nest, so that you get your discount. So see what I'm doing? I'm cutting, this is like a big sticker, and I'm cutting the truck away from these other elements because these other elements I'm not going to use today, so I'll put them with the others. They'll get used on another project. That's the nice thing about these transfers. You get lots of elements to use. Now... I think I'm going to put this on the top, this darker orange. It doesn't really matter. Just do what makes you happy. Um, I'm going to cut this corner off so I can kind of gauge where the edges of this truck are. And then here, I don't want to, I don't want to lose out on these twigs right here. Um, I think I can get most of it in. And then I'm going to put this here, and then underneath that, I'm going to put Hey Boo. It's going to go over here. Hey Boo. Okay, so here's the thing. Um, the round is a 16-inch round. You've never used rub-ons, Pat? Well, this is good for me. This is helpful for me to know. Cindy says she has used them, and she loves using them. That's great. You know what's really fun about them is the impact is so dramatic. That's what it is. Okay, so a couple of things. I wanna get as much of this in as possible. We want this to be centered, but then this goes kind of beyond the truck, the back of the truck. So I don't wanna lose that necessarily. So I'm gonna move it a little bit forward, move the truck a little bit forward so I don't lose all of that branch. Um, when I put this down, I have to keep in mind, I have these pallet ridges, these like divots in the board. And I'm going to have two of them that are going to span this truck because the truck is rather large. Uh, when you use these, this is what you would need to know about the anatomy of a rub-on transfer. <laughs> you have three layers. You have the backing, which is this white shiny part right here. This is the backing. Okay, that's the first part. The second part is the actual sticker. That's the truck. And you're looking at the back of the truck right here. You're looking at the spider and the back of the truck right there. So that's the second part. And then the third part is the top part. And that's holding the sticker. It's holding the sticker. This, this clear plasticky part where my fingers are, that's the top. So you have the bottom, the middle is the sticker, the truck itself, and then you have the top. I cut... Be, don't separate anything. You don't want to separate anything, but I do like to cut out what I'm using so I can kind of figure out placement. And then once you have a good idea of your placement, like I just need to leave enough room for hey boo down here. I'm going to put hey boo and I'm going to put it right on this line, I think. Like right there. Hey, <laughs> and then boo right here. Um, so this truck can lay about right here. So once you know where you want to place it, you're ready to peel it, okay? So you're gonna peel it off and it's like a big sticker. When I take the backing off of this truck, this, this is sticky. So do not touch it. Do not touch the truck on the back because it's like a big sticker and you do not 
want to ruin your sticker. So, all right, the backing is off. This can get thrown out because we won't use it again. Here's, we've got two layers. You're looking at the back of the sticker and then here's the clear, the overlay, the part that's holding the sticker is right here. And what we need to do is we need to flip this around, place it on our board. Now, when this touches something, it's gonna stick. So I'm gonna hold it over the board. I'm not gonna put it down until I am really, really comfortable with the placement. I'm just gonna float it until I'm comfortable with the placement. And then once I know like, okay, yeah, that's where I want it, you can put it down and start pressing on it. I think I want it a little bit higher, like that. And the nice thing about these palette boards is they have lines on them, so the lines will help you with your placement as well. So I can look at the top of the truck and this line that's right there, that palette line, and judge you know, how um, am I horizontally straight or not? Okay, now it's, yeah, I, I have I've not pushed on anything, but I've placed it where I want it. And the nice thing about the, the top overlay is it's clear so you can see the placement. And make sure you leave enough of the top overlay um, uh, like around the actual element, the design element. Make sure you leave enough so that you can hold the, the, um, the transfer. Don't cut so close to the truck that when you pick it up, you're touching the sticker. Give yourself enough room. Uh-oh, now I wiggled it. <laughs> okay, here we go. We're gonna put it right here. And then once you're comfortable with where you want it, you actually can start pressing from the middle out. It's a sticker. Um, this is gonna start the adherence of it. But what you really need when you order these, you're gonna get this little rub-on tool, looks like this. And this is what you're gonna to use to transfer the sticker onto the board. Because right now, it's not stuck to the board just yet. We'll use this, this stiff plastic tool and we're gonna push, we're gonna rub it into the board. Okay, so I'm gonna start in the front where the spider is. We're gonna rub this into the board. I have these lines right here, and I'm just gonna go right over the lines. I'm not gonna worry about pushing the truck into the lines, because this is a nice big transfer design. But I'm gonna push, and I'm pushing pretty firmly. I mean, I'm giving it a good amount of pressure. And then what I can start to do very slowly is peel this back and see, did it actually transfer? Nope, this part of the truck did not transfer yet. I can see it. So I'm gonna come and I'm gonna push. Push, 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 and I'm shaking my table like crazy. And then peel back slowly, and some of it won't transfer. So you just put it back down and you keep pushing. Now, these come with the transfers when you order them, these little plastic things, but if you lose it, you could use, I have like an old comfort, <laughs> like a hotel key, that would work. Anything that's blunt, this is one of those pointy tools from the Dollar Tree, that probably would work. Like you want anything that's dull and stiff that you can push down and then you're gonna slowly peel back and see, oh, I missed the front of the truck. The smoother the board that you're using, the easier this is gonna be. And my palette board is a little bit rustic and rough. That's why I gave it just this light sanding before I went in with the truck because I knew with this rough board that it was gonna take more pressure to get this truck to stick to the board. So see what I'm doing? I'm really slowly pulling back. And right here I can see it's not, it's not attached to the board. So I'm gonna put it back down and I'm gonna push specifically on that section. And then I'm gonna pull back again and make sure that it attached. Do not rip quickly. If you pull this up quickly, it's gonna mess up your whole design. You wanna go, see how slow I'm going? And I can see right here, parts of the truck once they wanna come up, it's not completely stuck down on the board. So I put this back down. Oh, I missed the front of the window. So I'm talking to you and rubbing and talking and rubbing and peeling it back to show you and teach you. I'm gonna take a few minutes, I'm just gonna rub because this, 
It's just gonna take me a couple of minutes to give this enough pressure to get this to transfer over. And if I keep talking, it's gonna take longer. So give me a second to apply some pressure and then to test. Oh, I missed this one part right here. You guys, isn't this cool? So cool. So here's my, my overlay, my top part. I'm going really slow and I can see this part wasn't completely attached. can see right here I've got a little part that's kind of sticking up off the palette board that would be hard for you to see from your angle but I can see it where I am so if you go really slow and pay attention your eye right here to where you're peeling from you'll if you see any movement on the truck itself it means it's not fully adhered to the board you should put it down and apply a lot of pressure and then go back again and start peeling Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful, you guys. This is so much easier than painting. I am not a painter. I mean, I love to paint. I can use a good template and paint a vintage truck. In fact, I teach that in my craft therapy club. I give you guys the template and teach you how to paint the vintage truck for any season that you want to paint it for. But I'll tell you what, this is a lot faster. I'm missing some of the tire here. I can see it. I'm missing some of the wheel. Yep. What do you guys think? Do you think you can handle this? You got this. I know you can. You always do amazing projects. And even if we have used the tips from each ambassador, it's a huge help. Pam, I'm so glad you said that because that's the whole idea. That's the whole reason why Essential Stencil sets up this amazing lineup of brand ambassadors to come live and showcase to you how to use this stuff. And each one of us, I don't know if you noticed, we each have our own style, our own techniques, and what works for me may not be Melissa's bag, like Melissa may choose to do it differently, or Sharon, or Amanda, or Sarah, or Carol. Like We all have our own styles, but by going live and showcasing this stuff to you, we're showing you multiple ways that you can use these things um, with the goal of giving you the best success possible. I'm coming to the end. Like I have like an inch and a half or two inches left here. So now, if I pull on this and it pulls up too quickly, I may lose part of this if it's not stuck down all the way. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna start here and I'm gonna hold my hand. This is all unattached now, this whole section. I'm gonna hold my hand here and really hold this in place and I'm gonna pull up here just to make sure that I don't lose my place with any of this and it doesn't release too quickly at the very end here. This pumpkin is giving me a little, a little bit of a challenge. Oh. I'm afraid if I go the other way, it's gonna pull up too quickly and I'll lose some of the design. So I'm choosing to do it this way. And this hand is holding this down so I don't lose my place, just in case it unattaches real quick. Because I'm at the very, very end of this. Now, I would love it if I could get Now it's completely off. All of it is off. I missed, did I miss that right there, the top of that pumpkin? It's like the little stem. And I would love it if I could wrap around, do you see right here? I don't know if you can see that. There's just a little piece, top branch from this branch right here. <coughs> I wouldn't mind if I could get that to wrap around and stick to the side. Just, I don't know why, so I don't lose it completely. So I'm gonna bend that, yeah. And I got it to go around to the side there. I mean, I still have more, I could, <laughs> I could wrap it around and do it on the back too. Yep, I get it on the back if I wanted to, but I really wanted to just get it to go around the side. Now the whole thing is released. The whole thing is loose. The whole thing is up. My gosh, you guys, if you love it, show some hearts on that screen. It's Crazy Town 
easy. It's crazy town gorgeous. You do not have to know how to paint all this stuff, all these beautiful details. Um, okay, now, before you do anything else, this is your top part. This is going to get thrown out. Look at all those hearts. We're going to throw this out, but before we throw it out, I'm going to place it back down, and I'm going to use it as a burnishing tool. So I'm going to use it to rub. I don't want to rub with my hands. I want to rub with this really silky, smooth plastic piece. And I'm going to make sure that all of these parts are really rubbed into this board. This is called burnishing. And if you wanted to, my, the, the, the truck is floating over the palette creases. <laughs> I could push them. See, here's my crease right here. There's that line, but the truck is sitting on top of that line. I could push in here, and I like the look of that. Push the design into that crease so that I get that palette line, okay? So I'm gonna take my little tool and I'm gonna softly and gently rub this into that line to get that line to reappear. Do you see the difference here? Look at the pumpkins. So the line is on the pumpkin, but it's not over here. So I just take this tool and I'm gonna rub it in that line to get that line to reappear all the way down so it looks really seamless and natural. I'm gonna do the same thing down here. This whole, here's the line for the palette you see that right there? But the truck is completely smooth. It's sitting on top of that line. So I'm gonna take this tool and I'm gonna run it in that line and it's gonna muck it up. It's gonna distress it a little bit, but it's gonna reestablish that line so that it looks more natural. Now you can see that palette board line that we know it's there. We know it's there because there's a palette board line every few inches, you can see them. So I wanted to reestablish those lines. And so you can just use this, run it in that, and just smooth it out. And then take your top, this is your top piece. And we're gonna use it and we're just gonna really make sure this is all smoothed down. I think it's pretty good because we did a lot of that earlier. Okay, what do we think? You guys, this alone on its own without any phrases at all, it's so darling. The yellow color that I used, this um, Arles color, it's actually probably my favorite one of all of them. And it got hidden behind almost all of the truck. Here's the Arles color. <laughs> I, I picked it because that pumpkin is very closely that same color, but I think it coordinates really well. And I used, remember, if you're just coming on, I said this earlier, I used the colors of the pumpkins to pick the colors for my back room panels, okay? Um, oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. I love it so much. Okay, next up is Hey Boo. <laughs> hey Boo, and I wanna put it down here. It's gonna go on this white panel, the panel that is the color plaster from Waverly. Actually, I don't need this anymore, I don't think. So I can put that in water and cover this up. So this is the color plaster from Waverly and it's right here. And then I distressed it with the oranges and the yellows. But what I wanna do is just add the Hey Boo. What color do you think I should use, you guys? I was thinking about using a dark gray. I had pulled out this pewter gray for it, but now I'm not so sure if I should do the dark orange. I could do brown too, actually. All of the tops of the pumpkins are brown. We could do brown. Oh, what color should I do the words? You think this is a great idea, Diane? You're liking this craft? I love this so much. I'm really, really happy with it. I'm really happy. This, you, but you see how easy this is? You could have the same exact results. You just have to pick up that set. This set. Um, so I'll show you one more time just so you guys, those of you that are just coming on. This truck comes from this set the Halloween truck and gnomes, and it's a set of rub on transfers. And they're fabulous and they're really a beautiful, great size. We got some small elements, some big elements. You think charcoal gray for this? Donna, you like this color? Oh, Christine says, amazing, Grace, just amazing. Yay, I'm so happy you love it. Hey, Kathy Chef, thanks for sending some stars. 
Shaylin says, use black, it would pop. Yeah, look at, we have black definitely in the wheels. And then we have forms of like grays all throughout the truck. The truck is just fantastic. The paint job on these, this truck is amazing. It is amazing. If we even have one pumpkin that's a little bit gray. This is one pumpkin right here that's kind of gray. Um, so I could use, this gray might be a little bit too green, actually. Let me see if I have a different one. I might not have, a, like, another gray. I do have, I could make a gray. I have black and this light gray. I could put these together and make a gray. So you're thinking black. Rhonda says black. Jennifer says black or gray. Peppercorn, Elizabeth. Yeah, so like a lighter black or a, a, a dark gray. Um, Holly, where do you buy these stencils? You want to go to EssentialStencil.com. And Essential Stencil pinned in the comments. There are only 36 of the, this set left. Oh my gosh, I did not know this, you guys, when I did this live. They're telling me there are only 36 of these left, this set. And you get the three, you get three sheets of designs, including the big house and the truck that I just used, and all the little gnomes and bats and mushrooms and trees and all that. 36 of them are left, so don't delay. Just go to EssentialStencil.com, use my code, the Comfy Nest, to make sure you get a discount so that you can grab a set. Gray and black. I'm seeing a lot of comments for gray and black. Gloria says, so exciting to see so many watching again this week. Yeah, look at how many folks are with us. Yay, it's so exciting. Bonnie says she would use black. Mm, dark gray for sure, Christine says. All right, let's make a dark gray. I think everybody's in. Oh, I shouldn't do this right on my right on my board. I'm going to push this back a little bit. And then I'm going to try to mix a light gray with some black. I know my little paint palette looks horrendous. I know this. I know this. I should clean it. I know this. <laughs> Girls, anybody like me, are you just like, oh, I don't have time for that. I I'm just not, I'm just not into that right now, the cleaning bit. Told you, I needed a, um, my dream in my craft room is to have a paint, not a paint, but a craft room, I call it a craft room concierge. You know, you have a concierge at a, like at a spa or at a hotel and they, you know, bring your bags to your room for you and they park your car and they, you know, if you need anything, you call on the concierge, right? I want a craft room concierge and the job of this person. And now mind you, I want him to be young and hunky. <laughs> Let me just say, I think he should be young and hunky. I don't know. It's my dream. This is my dream folks. Okay. My craft room concierge is young and hunky. And when I need a nice tea, he's going to get me one. And when I need that big box of ribbons to come down off that shelf that's too high for me and I have to go get a step stool, I'm just going to ask the concierge. He's going to go get it down for me because he's stronger and mightier. He's more flexible. And that's his. And he's going to wash my paintbrushes and he's going to wash my stencils for me. And he's just the bomb, man. He's my concierge. <laughs> I have a dream of having a concierge take care of all this stuff. <laughs> I know I should clean this palette, but I have not. I'm dreaming of the concierge to come take care of it all. I know, Dawn, you guys know this is my dream. All the girls who hang out with me, the crafty chicks who hang out with me at the Comfy Nest with Grace on a regular basis, um, particularly in my membership groups, you guys know me. You know, this is my dream. A hunky, strong guy who can take care of all the things that I want to do. <laughs> Cindy says, I love you, Grace. That was Cindy. Yeah, we need to have a craft retreat. Wouldn't that be so fun? Maybe we could hire a couple of concierges to take care of it all. Um, Shauncey says, I can pretend to be hunky in exchange, and young and hunky in exchange for business assistance. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love, I love that we can have so much fun with this. I know. Cindy's like got like the cry laugh emojis coming at me. Oh, yeah. My husband has no, like my, Debbie. <laughs> She says, your husband might have a different idea. Yeah, this is not his dream. This is my dream solely, that I would have a craft room concierge. Now, every once in a while, I'll tell you, I have a 15-year-old and a 17-year-old, and every once in a while, I can whine enough that I convince one of them 
to carry something heavy for me or get it down off a shelf or something like that. But the concierge would not whine. Like he's not gonna whine, he's not gonna complain. He's gonna smile, he's gonna say, sure thing, honey, whatever you need. <laughs> And eventually he's going to anticipate my needs and just go get me that margarita. Because you know it's Friday and it's time for margaritas. Do the gray, then go back and fade black from the top down. Jennifer, that's a really fun idea. Uh, Cindy says, I always wanted a pool boy, but I don't have a pool. <laughs> Cindy, Cindy, it's okay. It's our dream. We can dream whatever we want, right? Okay, hey boo, I got to figure out placement of this hey boo. Hey boo. I could say that to my concierge. If I put hay there, it's gonna end right there. And then I would put boo here. Yeah, I like it. I'm not gonna overthink it too much. We're just gonna put it down. I'm using this bottom line on my palette board to give me my um, placement for, for my words. It's actually quite helpful. The one thing I do need is to offload a little bit. I have too much paint on my I can tell, I just have too much paint on this stencil brush. Can you see that? It's just too much glistening paint on there. So I'm gonna come over here on a piece of scrap paper and I'm gonna offload some of it. And then we'll come in here and we're gonna do, hi boo. Oh my gosh, you guys, I love that you can laugh with me about this concierge concept. Um, if you have not heard me speak of my dream of having a concierge, I welcome you to my dream. You can adopt it as your own if you want to. You can, I mean, why not? Let's dream it into being. You know what they say. You have to dream it and then it will happen. So let's name him. Let's like figure out, please. I, the things I would have him do is definitely clean my paintbrushes at the end of the night. I, I, I don't like doing that. Um, clean my paintbrushes, clean the stencils. Also, please, Put the stencils back in their original packaging and back in the bin that they go in, please. Could you do that? Like, please, I could use that help. Um, then, I wanna craft today without interruption, so can you go get the mail? Could you please make me some lunch? <laughs> I'm not that demanding. I like more coffee now, please. Okay, I'm a little worried because the, the O is so close to the word hay, and I don't want to get any black paint down here. So I'm gonna use the insert from the stencil like Melissa does, just to cover up the O so I don't get black where I don't want it. And I'm, I'm going over this line and it has some orange in it. So I have to decide whether to poke this dark gray down into that line or just leave it a little bit orange. I'm gonna do a little bit of both. All right, we got hay. We got hay, girl, it's there. Now, before I put this back down, I wanna make sure that I don't have any wet, like wet paint here. Because if, if there was wet paint here, it's gonna get on there. I don't feel anything, so that's good. The other thing you can do to just be sure, you could put this down here to protect that part. And then get your boo in place. I'm gonna put it a little closer to the word hay. I'm gonna go a little closer. And yeah, okay, so see what I did? I'm just using this underneath to make sure that none of this paint, I think it's dry, but just in case, just in case I'm wrong, we're gonna put that there. Okay, now we're gonna do the boo part. Um, I think I want it a little higher. Okay, here we go. I think this dark gray was a really smart choice. It's not quite black. I mixed my dark gray, uh, excuse me, I mixed a lighter gray with black and it came up with this darker gray. Oh, the, the O in the middle has the little um, spider web on it and it's super cute. Oh, I've just budged that. I budged it a little more than I needed to. All right, here we go. We're almost done here. And then I'll be able to show it to you. I'm gonna hinge this. I just, yeah, it's good. It's all good. Hey, boo. <laughs> all right, I'm gonna hold it up so you can see it in its entirety. Let me just put, put some things aside. 
so you guys can see it. And then, yeah, we're just about done. You guys, I'm sweating my little, my tail off here. You see how pink my skin is? It gets so hot in this room when I get, I get all crafty. Oh, hey boo, where's my concierge? Turn on the fan. I have to do it to myself because there's nobody to do it for me. All right, look. Looky, look. Oh. Look at the spider web. It's so cute. Look at the, like, the spiders and the black. I'm going the wrong way because everything's opposite for me. But the black um, sprig there, the black, what do you call it? Branches. And then you got the spider on the front. And then in the word boo, we got a little spider web. Oh my goodness. Hey boo. So see, I think um, because, I think that the, the graphics that Essential Stencil uses, the graphic designer that they use, she's actually a watercolor artist, is my understanding. So when she creates these transfers for us, let me get you guys straightened out here. When she creates these, these transfer designs for us, they are actually watercolors, I believe. And so she has these gorgeous variation of colors, but the, the colors aren't like, you don't have perfect straight lines because it's a watercolor. So this background where I mucked it up and I added some of the other colors onto the board, it kind of goes in line with the watercolor where we have a variation of colors. It's not just straight orange and white and yellow, white and orange. It's a mix of them all together on top of one another. So I'll add a really cute bow, or excuse me, ribbon. I will add a nice ribbon to the back of this so that it can hang. It's a 16 inch board. This will be great on my front door. I'm really excited about it. Hey boo for when October hits. It's far too early now as far as I'm concerned. Um, I would love to know what you think of it. Tell me in the comments. It's so beautiful, it's so beautiful. Okay, there's only eight of these left. <gasps> Essential Stencil is updating us in the comments. The pinned comment says there's only eight of these left. Go to EssentialStencil.com now. Use my code, the comfy nest, all is one word, to get your 10% off. So you can grab this set. Look at, I cannot believe how big and beautiful this truck is, you guys. Oh my goodness. And even with the cobweb, and even with the spider, I feel like this would just be seriously cute on your front door, even after October. Like, take me to Thanksgiving and then we'll put something else up for Thanksgiving. It's a great creation. Thanks, Linda. Thanks for saying so. I'm so glad you guys love it. It's fabulosity. You bought two of them, Cindy? Oh, there's eight left. So four of you bought two, they'd be all gone. That was really smart because there's only one of these trucks in each transfer set. I mean, the transfer set, let's grab it again. This is the rest of what came on the sheet with the truck. And then you also get, they're 12 by 16 sheets. So you're getting a lot you're getting a lot of different designs. And you can use these to make little Halloween bags for the kids to collect um, candy from you or to put on the pail, the candy pail that you use to give out Halloween to the kids. I thought that the, these would be really cute on a tote bag, a little tote bag, but you've got some mushrooms and some bats and lots of gnomes with jack-o'-lanterns and pumpkins and a cauldron. You've got a couple of cauldrons in the set. He's got a broom. This little guy's got a broom. The whole set is called Halloween Trucks and Gnomes. You get three sheets. These are not the only transfers available. Look at look ahead to Christmas. I don't know right now if there's any Christmas ones on the site. There were some last year. And if there are any of those in inventory, if you're going to shop for these, you might as well grab your Christmas ones because you see how easy and fun they are to work with. You guys can do this. I know you can. I know you can. And when you get your set... If you're just not sure, you're like, oh, wait a minute, what did she do again? Come back to this video, come back to Facebook, go to the Essential Stencil page, go to the tab that says live, and you'll see all the live videos that us brand ambassadors are doing, and find this video or any other one where we're showing you how to use these transfers so that you can make your own creations. Now, to top coat this, I will use Brush On Mod Podge. That's, I use Mod Podge top coat all the time, 
It's one of my go-to top coats, especially for painted surfaces. And I have used the brush on matte Mod Podge on these transfers and it works beautifully. It works just fine. It'll really hold it in place so it won't go anywhere on you. So that's what I'm gonna use. You can use your favorite, I suppose. Just use your favorite top coat. That's the one. Oh, Mitzi ordered two sets. Mitzi, I only have one set and I just used up my truck with you guys. So lucky ducky that you got two because you can make one this year, one next year, or make two this year and give one away to a friend. All right, you guys. She just ordered three. Stephanie, it's so exciting. Thanks for ordering, you guys. And I really hope if you use my code, I want to thank you. I hope you used a code to get your discount. My code is the comfy nest. Um, you'll get a discount on your order and I thank you. I thank you for doing that because I benefit from it as well. It's how we earn our income. The truck turned out so cute, Diane. It's adorable. All the credit goes to the watercolor artist, not to me. I just was able to kind of put it together on a board that made sense, you know, so it all is cohesive and coordinating and matching and all that jazz. Now, I'm going to call on the concierge and he's not going to answer. <laughs> paint presses to clean and a stencil to clean with these there's nothing to clean up that's the beauty of the transfers there's nothing to clean up all I have to do is throw out the top sheet and the bottom sheet and I'm good to go but I got some cleaning to do now so I'm gonna bear, <laughs> bid you all farewell and say good night go make something pretty that brings your heart joy I always end all my lives with that way that way just encouraging you to create regularly if it brings your heart happiness create the things that you love um, and I'd be honored if you'd come on over to the Comfy Nest with Grace and follow me there. But it's been a pleasure to hang out with you guys here on the Essential Stencil Facebook page. Have a blessed night. Oh, we should be looking for some, the winners. Oh, let's just wait a second. I forgot. I almost forgot. Let's wait and see if, um, if Essential Stencil, let's see if they post our winners because there should be three people winning some stencils tonight. Oh, Essential Stencil said, wow, these have sold out. You guys are amazing. And Grace, thanks for inspiring us tonight. You are welcome. Oh, they announced the winners. I see Bronwyn, Bronwyn Charles Iserman. You just want to set a stencil. So Bronwyn, Dee Dee Crockett, and Sharon Eskett Lowstetter. The three of you just want to set a stencil. So Sharon, Dee Dee, and Bronwyn, look at that pinned comment. It gives you the email where you need to send your mailing address to Essential Stencil. At that email in the pinned comment, they will send you a set of stencils. That's just for hanging out with us tonight and, and commenting and chit-chatting with us in the comments. So how exciting, Bronwyn, Dee Dee, and Sharon. Congratulations. You guys, if you're catching the replay, make sure you tell us that because they'll award another set of stencils to a replay watcher. All right, for now, really, I got to go because I got some cleaning to do. <laughs> Many blessings. Good night.